If you're expecting a baby, you may be thinking about writing a birth plan because it's on those lists of things that they tell you to do before you have a baby. So I'm going to have a look at the pros and cons of birth plans and also give you a little bit of my story. Fair warning before we begin, I have two children, neither of my birth experiences were plain sailing, but both have happy endings, I have two happy, healthy children, and that is the thing to bear in mind. This video is not intended to look at birth as like a scary thing and as sort of the thing to be anxious about. Yes, both of mine went a little bit wonky, but it's a day. It passes, and then you have a beautiful, happy, healthy baby to enjoy. And you never sleep again, but that's another story. Before I had my first child, I wrote a birth plan. I laminated that birth plan. I was all about the birth plan. And in fact, the only person who wasn't on board with my birth planning extravaganza was my baby, because he didn't give a monkeys. He clearly had not read it. So long story short, what I planned to happen was I wanted a reasonably natural experience. I knew I was gonna be in a consultant-led unit because I have other complications, but I wanted as natural as possible. I was gonna try without an epidural. I would have liked to have tried a water birth. I wanted delayed cord cutting, skin to skin, minimum intervention. What I got, a super quick and intense labor. The baby's heart rate was down and he was in distress and it was like, he's gotta come out now. Into surgery, spinal block, C-section, baby whisked off somewhere to be looked at and I was just shell-shocked in a cubicle on my own eating some toast like what well, that was not the plan second time round no birth plan in sight but I knew again I wanted to try and have a reasonably natural experience and again the baby had other ideas so this time uh, my waters broke but I didn't have contractions so after a certain amount of time uh, I was induced push 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 blah 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 ended up into surgery again, have a spinal block, and every woman's favourite word, an episiotomy! Hooray! <sighs> so with all of that in mind, you may think that what I'm about to tell you is don't bother writing a birth plan. But actually, I think there's a lot of value to doing them, and I would encourage everybody to write one. You just have to be prepared to chuck it out the window when the time comes. The main reason that I would recommend writing a birth plan is just to reframe the whole idea of birth in your head because birth is an unknown and the unknown is scary and you hear whispered stories from other mums and you watch one born every minute and you watch the film Alien where the baby bursts out of that woman. It's all kind of overwhelming but it is going to happen. I mean, not the alien bit. So you are gonna have to find a way to manage this. Writing a birth plan, at least for me, just helped break the whole thing down into separate sections that then felt easier to kind of deal with, you know? So with each stage of birth, you can check the facts of what's going on, try and understand what's going on with your body, make any choices that need to be made. Because I think when you are coming up to kind of a difficult experience or a, a new experience, I strongly believe in the power of facts. I did the NHS antenatal course, I did the NCT antenatal course, I did a birthing class, and all of those things were so helpful in kind of arming me with facts to be able to go into this experience and I really needed that. Some people are the opposite and they're like, I just, I don't wanna know, la 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 la, it's gonna happen and I'm just gonna let it get on and I, I don't wanna know anything about it. And that's why some people deal with it, I am the opposite. And for me, it is like kind of arming myself to go into battle. And it helped me a lot, even with things like, um, and this is not birth plan related, but from the birthing class that I did, one of the techniques they taught was to see every contraction as a wave. So it starts off, it will build and build and build, it will reach its peak and then it will start to tail off. And I found that super helpful in that if you experience a contraction as just a flat thing, you will experience that pain from the beginning to the end and then, oh, it's finally over. If you see it as a wave, I found you, you it builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and when it gets to the top, and you feel it start to ease, you're like, oh, okay, great, this one's over. That's just gonna ease off now and, and get better and better and be gone. So you're kind of cutting the contraction in half in that way. I definitely found it that it worked that way for me. And that's one of the things that I got out of all my preparation and my pre-battle kind of 
yeah. So I think this act of making a birth plan is a good tool to prepare yourself mentally, to combat any anxiety, to maybe dispel any irrational fears that you have. And also there are certain questions that you are gonna be asked when you're in labor and you, you're not in a good headspace to be making decisions. So if you've made your birth plan in advance and you've gone through that with whoever's gonna be your birthing partner, it, it just is so much easier. Do you want an epidural? Do you want pethidin? Do you want to be moving about? Do you want delayed cord cutting? Are you happy to give the vitamin K injection after birth? What? Know what you want. However, when it comes to birth, what will be will be. And that's okay. Because you may have written your birth plan and you are absolutely adamant that you want a purely natural birth and no intervention whatsoever. But if you are in the thick of it and you were exhausted and you think, I think I want an epidural, get a sodding epidural. This is not a competition because that's just the start of it. You may be adamant you want to breastfeed, but it doesn't work out for you. Fine. Baby doesn't sleep when the routine says it should. Yep. So as much as that feeling of control in advance was helpful, you are gonna have to relinquish that when the time comes and be flexible. Because as I say, I had my plan all set out when I had my eldest child and from the start to the finish, nothing went how I expected it to be. And I felt, I don't know, not a failure, but kind of disappointed. I, I wish I'd been able to experience that natural birth that I wanted to, but birth isn't the ultimate aim. It's not the destination, it's just the way that you get to your baby. So yes, do your preparation, but be prepared to roll with the punches because whatever it takes to get your baby out safely, do it. Just go with it. You will be fine. And that is it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please press like, please subscribe to see more. It's just below me by here. And oh, as chance would have it, look, here's some other videos I made. So maybe go and have a look at those and I'll see you very soon. Love you. Bye.